many webinar. My name is Amir Yazdani and I'm from Merdak University, also serving as the chair of IES Western Australia chapter. So today uh, it's my great honor to introduce you or a speaker, uh, Dr. Sayed Muhammad Jafar Jalili, who is going to talk about the automated deep learning based design for uh, solving time series forecasting problem, a case study for solar irradiance forecasting. So before going to the uh, presentation, I would like to summarize the uh, activity of the IES uh, chapters, Western Australia chapters in 2021. So far we had uh, nine, you know, webinars and also, uh, I'm pleased to let you know that we have received the best chapter award of the best chapter award, IES award uh, for the or chapter this year. So that is very distinguished for the any chapter around the world. So we will co keep continue our uh, webinar next year and the uh, next, uh, you know, vice chair keep continue to uh, taking my role in 2020, Dr. Adnan Hay Hayat is the next uh, uh, chairman of the, you know, IES. So uh, and uh, uh, no, it's time to uh, go for the uh, biography of the very short biography of the or a speaker before he starts, and then uh, we can uh, you know sit here and enjoy this presentation. So, uh, Dr. Jalali, who is the member of the uh, I, uh, IEEE, received his master's degree in information technology from Alameda Tabo Tabai University, Tehran, Iran, in 2016, and his PhD with the Institute uh, for Intelligent System Research and Innovation, uh, Deakin University, Australia, in 2021. He was also a research assistant at University of Massachusetts, USA, conducting research in the field of artificial intelligence. His primary research interests include machine learning, deep learning, uh, deep neural architecture search, uh, and optimization. Dr. Jalali received the prestigious Deakin University Postgraduate Research uh, Scholarship in 2018. Besides, he is the winner of the uh, prestigious Alfred Deakin Postdoctoral Research Fellowship Award in the year 2021. He is currently a research fellow at Deakin University, Australia. So it is again my great pleasure to invite our speaker, uh, Dr. Jalali. Mohammed, uh, are you ready to go? Hello, dear Amir. Thank you so much for having me for this session. If I am allowed, I can start. Yes, yes. Thank you very much for so much. Uh, for accepting our invitation. The thank floor you is much. yours. Please, yeah, start. Thank you so much, and I should a uh, big uh, congratulation for your team that you have received that uh, prestigious award. Really, thank you very much. That is cheers. My thank you. The yeah. floor is yours. Uh, yeah, thanks. please. Sure. Uh, uh, the topic. Uh, just I please uh, share a screen, uh, Muhammad. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll do it again. Okay. Yeah, thank you. That's perfect. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, uh, dear Amir, for having me for this uh, session. My name is uh, Mohammed Jalali. I, I got my PhD from Deakin University with the Institute for Intelligence System Research and Innovation. Uh, I have, and the topic that I'm gonna to talk today is about automated deep learning based design for solving time series forecasting problems. A uh, case study for solar irradiance forecasting. Here is a brief, View of mine. I'm a member of IEEE since the year uh, 2018, and as I said, that uh, dear Amir introduced me. And the thing is, uh, my primary research interests are for machine learning, deep learning, and op optimization. Uh, especially the uh, uh, my expertise in the deep neural architecture search. The topic that I'm gonna to in introduce the 
to you today. And um, I have also published more than 50 papers in reputable, I mean, academic uh, venues, like the transaction on system and cybernetic transaction on industry application, transaction on industrial informatics and some Elsevier and HP engage or not with high impact factor. I am currently, uh, uh, I mean, doing my postdoc as uh, the, the research fellow with ISRI, Deakin University, in uh, which will be started soon at the at the uh, January of 2022. So uh, here is the the outline that I'm gonna to uh, introduce you uh, some shots. Uh, I mean about this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to have a brief talk for I mean automated deep learning. How uh, what is that and what is the content? And the thing is, in the beginning, I'll go with the types of deep learning algorithms and the, the strategy of deep neural evolution as uh, one of the effective approaches for the automated deep learning models. I will introduce you into the details of this uh, methodology. Then I will go uh, uh, a brief introduction for solar irradiance forecasting, the case study that we're going to solve it today. And I'll give you some motivation and the contribution behind of this research uh, presentation today. And the thing is for the methodology section, I will go through the convolutional long short term memory. I will give you an overview about this, uh, no, this I mean, new deep learning models, which is mostly used for the forecasting problems. And then I will introduce you or propose new evolution framework that optimizes the architecture of CFLSTM model efficiently. And then again, then I will, for the experimental configuration, I will let you know about the data set that we have, I mean, applied the or algorithms and the compared uh, state of the art models based on them. And then the experimental setup and the experimental results will be explained for sure. And then this uh, presentation will be concluded with some, I mean, uh, future uh, direction. So most of the contents for this I mean, study research uh, presentation have been taken from my PhD work uh, entitled Automated Deep Sea and LSTM Architecture Design for Solar Irradiance Forecasting, which has been published by the prestigious ITRP transaction on uh, I mean, SMC systems with a very high impact factor. Currently, it is the second best transaction before the TPAMI as well. And uh, if I want to let you know more about the automated deep learning or auto deal, uh, automated deep learning has completely revolutionized the way of the model creation. It automates the machine learning and deep learning procedure to solve real world, I mean, business, academic, and industry problems with minimum manual help in a less time consuming manner. The solution tunes algorithms in the right direction to explore which model works best for a given situation. And also it learns from, own, uh, from its own data and results in the creation of effective models at a faster speed, which improves, uh, I mean, improves and enhances the overall workflow for a data scientist. So for the importance of the auto DL, as most of us know, manual construction of a deep learning model requires the precise following of multiple steps, backed with good, I mean, computer science and data science skill, excellent domain knowledge and mathematical expertise as well, which are hard to find in a single data scientist and machine learning engineer. Additionally, manual model creation involves a high degree of risk for errors and biases, these things can hamper the overall accuracy, I mean, uh, level of the algorithm and the model, along with the quality of insights the model will provide. So to bring accuracy and efficiency, I mean, high efficiency to our algorithm creation procedure, AutoDL plays a significant role. With automated deep learning and machine learning and expertise of data scientists, you can easily make your systems develop capabilities without spending excess time and, and also definitely money. The solution will assist you in providing valuable insights as a faster pace 
And this uh, strategy, I mean, AutoDL can serve its utilization in different, I mean, industrial segments, including banking, healthcare, marketing, sales, finance, manufacturing, robotics, sports, and many others. Uh, this uh, strategy automates the modeling task required to develop and deploy uh, I mean, effective deep learning models. With AutoDL, any organization can implement a deep learning solution as uh, seamlessly as possible and allow the data scientists and machine learning engineers to work on more I mean, crucial uh, uh, for solving their real world uh, problems. And the thing is, how to uh, or goal is that how to make the best usage from this, I mean, a strategy. All analytics based enterprises make use of deep learning in processing their routing tasks. It is obvious. Still, there are some complex tasks such as, I mean, selecting the best features and the appropriate or uh, optimal features and model family data pre-processing data post-processing model hyperparameter optimization and analyzing results that fall uh, way out, uh, I mean, from the league of uh, analytics that do not have expertise in the deep learning. So this is where, I mean, uh, automated deep learning saves the analysts from processing the mentioned application by creating efficient and effective algorithms or models that can achieve a very good accuracy at the lowest computational cost possible. So I will give you a, a, a very short uh, shot among the types of the deep learning algorithms. As you know, they have recently deep learning or deep neural networks, as I said, them with, as I wrote them with the DNNs, they have recently achieved significant progress in solving a wide range of the real world problems. And the reason is that deep learning user uses artificial neural networks to perform sophisticated computations on large amounts of data. It is a type of, I mean, machine learning that works based on the structure and function of the human brain. Deep learning models train machines by learning from I mean, samples or the example. Industries such as healthcare, inter entertainment and advert advertising I mean company commonly use deep learning for solving their problems so we want to know how the deep learning actually work while deep learning algorithms feature self-learning representation they depend upon artificial neural networks that mirror the way the brain computes information during the training procedure algorithms I mean deep learning algorithms use unknown elements in the input I um, mean distribution to extract features, group objects, and discover useful data patterns. Much like training machines for self-learning, this occurs at multiple levels, that's obvious, using the algorithms to build the model. So in this regard, deep learning algorithms make use of several algorithms, while no one network is considered perfect, which, which we have this basis in the machine learning as well. Some algorithms are better suited to perform a specific test. So to choose, uh, I mean, the right one algorithm, it is good to gain a solid understanding of some, I mean, primary algorithms. Convolutional neural networks are briefly called by CNN and uh, long shared short term memory or called LSTM is amongst the most established DNA algorithms, but I mean that for solving the forecasting, I mean the 1D forecasting problems, but we have uh, some most popular deep learning algorithms such as, as I said, convolutional neural network, LSTM recurrent neural network, the prestigious generative adversarial networks, and auto encoder for sure. Here is a as I'm showing by the mouse, here is an, uh, I mean, uh, a sample image that I brought for you for the convolution neural network, and here is for the, I mean, LSTM models. So uh, we want to know that how to use how to use deep neural evolution for the deep learning. As we might know that simply it is called deep neural evolution. It is very simple. We can say that optimization of DNNs using evolutionary algorithm is called DNA. So 
What is their advantage for using in the auto DL? They effectively and automatically optimize the architectures of deep learning model. So if I want to be more specific, as we might know, the design procedure of deep neural network is always, I mean, iterative and it requires technical expertise and practical experience in terms of trial and, and error. Moreover, the tuning of deep neural network hyperparameters is a very critical since the efficiency of network performance is closely linked to its architecture. As we have, I mean, review, uh, I mean, previous study in the field of uh, solar irradiance forecasting, it can be, I mean, uh, concluded that uh, most of these models have designed the deep architectures manually using a trial and error process, which is really time consuming. This process is very heavy in terms of computational com complexity since it takes a long time to execute a manually tuned architecture, which may not have the best predictive results. Therefore, in this presentation, we propose a novel evolutionary deep learning based model to produce, I mean, accurate, I mean, predictions for solar irradiance automatically without the need of manually tuning the deep learning architecture. To this end, uh, we have provided and proposed a combinational model based on the optimized architecture of deep uh, CNN and LSTM, as we call it CLSTM, uh, to construct a highly reliable and accurate, I mean, uh, model. So, uh, for those, for example, who are not uh, from the power system, I mean, uh, family, I'll I'll give you a shot about solar irradiance forecasting. As you might know, solar energy is one of the most widely spread types of renewable energy sources, which has found its place in the competitive power market in recent years. The modern technology always has made it possible for humans to harness this free and sustainable source of energy in either electrical or thermal form. So power grids have faced a very high growth of this uh, class of, I mean, energy in their structure as it has been recognized as the cleanest and most abundant renewable energy type available in the society. So some of the most significant advantage of, I mean, uh, solar energy in power grids, I mean, uh, can be named such as, I mean, re reducing the emission and greenhouse gases, mitigating the power losses and costs, providing the possibility of direct charging of, I mean, DC loads such as laptops, I mean, electric vehicles and phones without, I mean, converters and enhanced power quality. So despite, I mean, despite this, I mean, great and promising characteristics, the high penetration of solar energy in the grid could cause severe, I mean, stability issues. This is mainly due to the highly, I mean, volatile and random nature of this type of energy. Therefore, it is necessary to have an accurate and precise forecasting and prediction of the solar energy in order to support the ever increasing role of this green energy in the future of power system. In this regard, solar irradiance is considered as the most significant and critical parameter in determining the characteristics of the solar units, particularly of uh, knowing that how much power might be, uh, I mean, finally, uh, can I say, harvested in a, I mean, particular region. So the motivations that behind of this research presentation is that, again, I am reviewing most of the architectures and hyperparameters used for deep learning models are designed manually. Again, the traditional approaches are computationally demanding, or most of them are trapped into local minima. A large number of case studies solved for solar irradiance forecasting problem has been developed by manually designed deep learning models, which is a very time consuming process, or AutoDL model can solve efficiently these limitations. So what we have done in this work, in this work, we fully optimize the architectures of a combination of deep learning based CLSTM or 
or called CNN and LSTM algorithm for solving a particular time series forecasting problem called a solar radius. This is the first study using AutoDL for this particular domain. Actually, we have published this paper, dear Amir, uh, several months ago, and I hope that we are still be the first. And uh, what is our main contribution? We have proposed an accurate global horizontal irradiance forecasting model, concentrating on evolutionary sine cosine algorithm to, I mean, configure the hyperparameters of deep CLL, deep CLSTM neural networks with a higher rate of convergence. We have considered and, and introduced a three-phase modification for the first time to boost and enhance searching capacity capability of SCA algorithm and we have done our best to avoid local optimal trapping. The performance of this uh, novel proposed framework is assessed using three data sets gathered by the I mean, National Renewable Energy Laboratory from three different locations in the eastern states of United States in the vicinity of I mean, Columbus. Detroit and San Antonio. The experimental results show that the proposed methodology significantly outperforms other I mean, forecasting models. So, if you want to, to know more about what we have done here, we actually optimize the architecture and hyperparameters of CNN and LSTM. Actually, here is the CNN model and here is the LSTM model. We have combined this model together. Uh, and we have optimized whatever hyperparameters here is. If I want to be more specific, as you know, several hyperparameters could be considered in the standard architecture of a CFLSTM model, as we can see here. There are, I think, 10 or 12 hyperparameters here. So in this work, we consider networks whose layers are sequentially stacked one after the other. CNNs, again, as I have said them before, to be more specific are regarded as the, one of the, the most well-known types of deep, layer, deep learning models utilized in numerous, I mean, real-world application. CNN, I mean, mainly utilize three mapping layer, include the convolutional, as we can see here, pooling, I mean, and, uh, and flattening, and for the flattening, I mean, using the fully connected as an example the dense layer to process and represent the data convolutional layers are employed to identify input local connection whereas the i mean pooling layer slowly decre decreases the calculation corresponding to the target variable increasing the number of convolutional i mean layer can have many kernels that are used to i mean produce the same number of i mean invariant feature maps uh, for data from, I mean, uh, previous, I mean, layers. While the degree of information extraction is deeper, the feature extraction with the scale range is more, uh, I mean, precise, since the number of kernels in each, I mean, convolutional layer are, and as well, the size of the kernels are significant and important to the detail of extracting information. The pooling layer, taking place after the convolutional layer, as uh, we can see it here. Uh, it is responsible for, how can I say, to minimize the size of the input by tackling down sampling. Uh, once the feature maps have been obtained, they can be applied to a fully connected I mean, network, which you can see after the pooling in this figure. The fully connected layer I mean, layer determines a target dependent on input variables feature. The number of the dense layer and the number of neurons and I mean connectivity pattern, all of them has been, I mean, uh, regarded among the most important hyperparameters in the, I mean, uh, fully connected uh, layer. Then a regularizational concept, which means, I mean, either L1, lasso or L2, I mean, reach regression and a dropout uh, rate technique called R dropout, as you can see here in this table, which I mean consists of removing the proportional random uh, I mean collection of connections during training, or I mean implemented to control the 
overfitting based on each layer. Apart from the hyperparameters relevant to the CNN, I mean, hierarchical architecture, there are some basic hyperparameters, including batch size and learning rate. Uh, a more, I mean, optimal batch size can focus on providing better convergence and more effective gradient, I mean, computing compared to full batch gradient descent. And uh, for any training epoch, the learning rate, I mean, determines how much the weights uh, are adjusted for simplifying the modeling procedure. We apply a uh, 1D convolutional operator, or operator to, to directly forecast 1D, I mean, GHI data sets. You can see it in that, I mean, figure that I provided. For the LSTM, as you can see here, it's a, I mean, a schema. There are units defined in LSTM models as input, output, and for gigates. You know, for more details, you can go to my paper, but I explain them to you in details. Those give LSTMs, uh, they have brought the potential to update and control the flow of information in distinct blocks. This potential of LSTMs deep learning based LSTM model can be a competitive advantage in the case of a short term, I mean, solar power electricity forecast model, because it would possibly allow for a grid system to, I mean, continually updating the next forecasting using as input, output, and get information on memory blocks. There are generally, I mean, five key hyperparameters for training deep I mean, LSTM neural network, as we can see it here, including the number of LSTM uh, layers, layers, sorry, maximum epoch neural units in each layer and batch size having been applied in this work as well. You can see a general figure of LSTM here. And uh, in this work, we designed a CLSTM hybrid model as we call it convolutional LSTM, in which CNN layers, layers are deployed to extract features related to potential solar GHI chains, and the LSTM la layer is utilized to integrate these features in the low latency prediction of GHI data in time series for developing a dynamic feature extraction and predictive model with deeper algorithms. And, yep, here, here that we are gonna to, I'm gonna to, I mean, define or propose evolutionary algorithms that, you know, sine cosine algorithm or SCA is an intelligence evolutionary metaheuristic algorithms oriented on the sine and cosine function. For exploration and exploitation phases, SCA uses two position update equation, which are, I mean, the main, the main problems here. Its key benefits are few tuning parameters. It's very simple to code, easy of deployment, and efficient global search mechanism. However, its performance can be enhanced even further by, equi by, e by applying, I mean, this algorithm with a strong searching strategy. Thus, here, we introduce a modification method of three phases to boost and enhance the effectiveness of the SCA model for hyperparameter tuning of our CLSTM algorithm. So, uh, in the first, I mean, uh, modification phase, we apply uh, the OBL strategy, which means opposition-based learning to establish the I mean, diversification of the population. Uh, for second phase, we go with levy flight algorithm to maximize the efficiency of resources, searches, searching power, and prevent, I mean, premature convergence. And in the third phase, we, as you know, for example, uh, chaos maps are used to modify the key parameters of the CA. Of, I mean, the SCA in order to improve its convergence state. Uh, in this work, I mean, uh, four different chaotic maps, including the Sautus map, Sign map, Tent map, and Chebyshev map are applied to tune R1, R2, R3, and R4 parameters of the SCA. 
and you know here is I think it is hard to see that but the thing is this is what we have done it's it's a flow chart a brief flow chart of this and in, in our paper we have brought a very accurate solo code that is every step is clear here and for I mean this I mean proposed MSCA algorithm uh, we aim, for example, using this uh, SCA for optimizing deep CL, CLSTM neural net for hyperparameters to enhance prediction accuracy for solving solar GHI data set. So here I'm going to talk about how to uh, involve both of these, uh, I mean, concept together, for example, for GHI prediction. This combination is called MSC, MSCA CLSTM that we have called this name, which is aimed in using the improved SCA for optimizing deep CLC LSTM neural net for hyperparameters to improve forecasting accuracy for solar GHI datasets. Uh, you know, as uh, most of us know two major issues, including solution representation and the fitness function calculation should be addressed before deploying MSCA, I mean, or proposed model. It is worth noting that the proposed approach optimizes all CLSTM hyperparameter described in the previous, uh, I mean, I mean uh, slide. Each solution in MSCA can therefore be defined as a vector with 12 dimensions, each of which aligns to one of the I mean 12 hyperparameters that let me bring back to here and uh, as uh, I don't go to more details and the thing is what I'm going to say that yeah uh, as I mean MSCA continuously explores the solution space we need to I mean translate the achieve optimal values to their, I mean, rep representative or respective discrete hyperparameters. We have introduced a formula that can be seen in our paper. I didn't bring it here to not bring more, I mean, uh, complexity to this work. And uh, the thing is, to be more, I mean, specific in, in our proposed algorithm, a population with an individual it is generated and then each dimension equal to one of these 12 hyperparameters of the initial I mean after initialization of the population and chaotic maps new solution can be reached by continuously updating current position of the solution then the OBL and levy flight strategy are used for the update position in order to make a balance between the exploration and the exploitation I mean uh, phases uh, this procedure continues until the termination condition is met and best solution obtained is known as the final results. I mean, this, this, then the solution can be considered as this CLSTM hyperparameter optimal values in order to assess, I mean, the effectiveness of each solution. A fitness function needs to be specified for this reason. For example, the data from the input time series are split in two sets of training and testing. As we might know, the training set is needed to optimize the CLSTM hyperparameters with the aid of MSCA as well, whereas the testing set evaluates and tests the output of the final GHI prediction model. So we have used the mean square error, as you can see its formula here, to be used as the fitness function. I mean, to measure the fitness value of MSCA solution. So uh, let's have a bit. <laughs> and uh, for now, we're gonna to talk about that. We should. So I have talked all of them to show how it is effective. This purpose model. Three evaluation metrics such as root mean square error or MSE, the Pearson correlation coefficient and mean absolute error, which are amongst the most well-known metrics, are used to verify the performance of uh, our proposed model in comparison with the 
I mean, the state of the art deep learning models used for solar array. We have forecasting model. You have, you can see their formulas here. And to be fair, we have, I mean, uh, Im implemented or proposed MSCA CLSTM model and the other, I mean, state of the art algorithms in Keras, a high level library of TensorFlow backend under the Python version 3.6. And we have used the CUDA as well with the version of 10.1. And we have executed on a machine, I mean, a GPU machine configuring with NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti and 32 GB of RAM and Intel Core i7 CPU as well. So the algorithms used as the, I mean, competitive algorithms in order to challenge or, I mean, propose model as they say of the art during the time of her, uh, I mean, writing this paper, are uh, DWT, I mean, CLSTM. I have uh, brought a very complete, I mean, uh, introduction for this model. You can see it in my paper. MEA, ANN, Auto LSTM, XGBF, DNN, and so on. And also we have, I mean, uh, compare it with the LSTM, CLSTM and the basic version of the S SCA without any modification. So the data sets that we have used, they have been gathered from the solar location, as I said before, in the Columbus, Detroit, and San Antonio in the US. Uh, around 8,000 data points, more than 8,000 uh, data points have been gathered on each site, comprises of the GHI, I mean, Global Horizontal Index time series for the whole year of 2018, which uh, have been, I mean, gathered with uh, one hour interval for, or I mean, uh, prediction have been used here. And for the performance comparison, as I said before, comprehensive experiments have been done to make a comparison of the of the performance of proposed model with other models based on the RMS, EMA, and Pearson, also to make a better analysis of the results to be more fair. Different forecasting horizons are considered in a range of from one step to six steps. Here you can see the performance of different I mean, forecasting models based on the Columbus data sets. For example, for this data set, you can see the this is our model, and these are the competitive algorithms. As you can see, for example, in the table related for Columbus, it represents the results of GHI time series forecasting. And this result revealed that the or proposed model performs other forecasting algorithms in terms of, I mean, three evaluation matrices and also different forecasting horizon. For instance, the proposed, I mean, method obtains the best results for, I mean, one step, I mean, here. Uh, with the value of, of uh, 0.04140 and blah, 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 for, I mean, RF, MSE, Pearson, and MAE metrics, rep, I mean, respectively, as you can see. At the same time, the basic version of SCA combined with CLSTM, I mean, here, yeah, SCA, CLSTM, uh, places at, as the second best I mean, position by obtaining the values of, as you can see here, uh, sorry, here, with this value for, I mean, 639508. And as it can be seen from these results, the RMSE and MAE and Pearson values, I mean, uh, as 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 you see that, for example, by increasing, I mean, the time steps, the RMSE and I mean MAE is increasing. And for example, uh, for Pearson values, it it decreases for all, I mean, compare models when the, the forecasting horizon is changed, as you can see. Therefore, I mean, we can be we can be concluded that increasing the forecasting horizon has a negative effect on the performance of the forecasting model. So you can see such behavior for the other, 
I mean data sets. For example, for Detroit and San Antonio, you can see that our model performs the best in comparison with this state-of-the-art algorithm. As you can see here in this uh, figure, I mean, uh, we have showed we have shown that, for example, you can see in this figure, as an example, example to be more specific for the months of December for Columbus, Detroit, and San Antonio, for one step and, and two step ahead, I have, I mean, demonstrated the actual values as you can see by blue of the GHI time series and their predicted values indicated by red obtained by our proposed model for different forecasting horizon. Here is for one step and two step. As you can see from these plots, the predicted values are mainly close to the actual values showing that the or proposed algorithms can be adopted as a powerful forecasting model. Moreover, our novel algorithm follows sharp drops and correctly, I'm not saying that correctly, uh, perfectly predicts, I mean, extreme values. Furthermore, from uh, analysis of these uh, three figure, our model represents apparently a, a better chair fitting of the actual solar, I mean, irradiance time series, uh, smaller residual errors for one step and two step ahead of, I mean, forecasting uh, horizon. So as you can see, it fits very good. For example, would be the actual, I mean, uh, value. So. In this figure, you can see the convergence profile of our proposed MSCA CLSTM method based on the Columbus, Detroit, and San Antonio data sets. Uh, why do we have, I mean, convergence profile? Because we have used the optimization element for our uh, CLSTM model. So as we can see in this figure, I showed the convergence profile for one step uh, Two step, as you can see, one step is with this, two step with this, this color. This result will reveal that the proposed method has a high convergence speed, as you can see. Find the solution very well. And after a few iterations for Columbus, Detroit, and San Antonio data sets, thus it can be concluded that our proposed I mean, a hyperparameter optimization model has a significant impact on the convergence speed improvement, as we can see. So I wanted to conclude or present on my presentation here. First of all, I have provided an overview for AutoDL and what is that, what is its benefit for the real problems, and uh, a new deep learning framework called MSCACLSTM has been proposed to forecast the GHR solar irradiance. The or proposed model is a three stage modification of its origin, I mean, CA, the standard version of SCA, which has been developed to define optimal hyperparameters for our deep CLSTM architectures. The efficiency of this model was verified using based on the experiments on three different, I mean, case study with the solar GHI under one step and multi-step ahead forecasting scenarios. We also applied the mutual information strategy to select the efficient input features for the deep CLSTM model. Actually, we haven't done it manually. We have used the MI. And our purpose model, as we have seen before, outperform other models in terms of these three evaluation metrics. For future studies, uh, we have some plan to develop a more robust MCA, MSCA CLSTM version in order to forecast more complex time series forecasting problem with a higher level of demand, I mean, projection. This will include wind power, electricity, electricity load, and electricity price to reduce the energy waste and loss. You know, if any question here, uh, I would be more than happy to answer. Thank you very much, Muhammad, for, for your very, very interesting, interesting presentation and insightful, including Thank cutting so edge technology yeah. of the deep learning for time series forecasting. So it's time to, you know, uh, for the audiences to ask their questions. Feel free to ask. Muhammad is here and will answer to your questions. Uh, 
uh, remember here. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Said. Thank you so much. You, yeah, thank you. I'm hearing I just you have, very well. Yeah. <laughs> great. I just have yeah. one uh, quick question. So um, your focusing system, what is your highest resolution into the future? Can you see? Uh, can you see the drop in the next one minute? or the fluctuation in the next two minutes, or it's a long-term? Right. You are right, you are right, yeah. The question is that, as I as I mentioned, uh, you know, this is not for the, I mean, how can I say? This is not, for example, for the very short-term forecasting, okay? It is for the short-term okay. forecasting that we have targeted, okay? This is okay. the reason. Uh, I mean that, oh, okay. It is not for the ultra-short forecasting, okay? Did, did you get my point? Okay, yes. this is the reason that the, the input horizon is just for one hour. And when oh. when we say that, the, the next step, definitely that would be the, I mean, I mean, for the next one step, it will be predicted for one next hour, two steps ahead, for two hours later, yeah. six yep. steps ahead. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, I I get it. So do you think it's because of the input data you have, if you have got higher resolution data, are you able to do a very short uh, forecasting? So let's let's have a collaboration in this in this regard <laughs> to see that <laughs> can we do it or not. Send me an email, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, that was a question. Thank you. Bye. No worries. No worries. Thank you both. Remember, and uh, Muhammad, that was a very interesting question. Any more from our audiences? May I ask a question, Muhammad? Sure. <laughs> OK, uh, so uh, have you done any robustness test for checking the performance of the newly developed, uh, you know, architecture you introduced here? Uh, yes, you know, uh, actually, the thing is, if I want to be honest, these are the stochastic algorithms, OK? Because, for example, we have used, I mean, as you know, the, the deep learning generates the stochastic results. And optimization element like the evolutionary Bayesian and uh, reinforcement learning, they are all produced. I mean the, I mean uh, the stochastic results. Okay, so the reason is that actually I haven't tested it with robustness. You are right. Maybe for example, this would be a good, I mean, idea for having uh, a future work. But actually, we have tested. We have. Tested, I mean, or purpose model to have a to have a fair comparison. The value that you have seen, both most of them are based on the average. And actually, there is a limitation in the IEEE transaction, as, as as you know. For example, for the page limitation, we have reported the standard deviation. Okay, I mean that every algorithm or purpose algorithm, and the other, I mean, competitive algorithms, we have repeated them for 10 times, I think, in this work, and we got the average. We did our best to more close to the robustness, OK? But actually, as you know, the nature of these algorithms are uh, randomly and they assess that, I mean, stochastically, something like this. And this is, this is the reason that we repeat every algorithm 10 times and then see how, how well it works. I hope that I. Good, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, answer. Fair enough. Yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, thank you. Any more question from Mohammed? Uh, hi, I have hi. a question. Yeah. Okay. So, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hello. Can you hear me? Sorry, yes, I'm... yes, yeah. Okay. okay, my question is: uh, Could you please share uh, just about uh, your worst consistency, like the prediction? How many steps ahead your model yeah. can predict? Yes, yes. The Fair thing enough. is, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, uh, do you see my screen? Yep. Okay, so 
as you key, as you see here, this is the one step. One step is means that or input or input data is for one hour. Okay. So okay. two step two step means that it will predict for next two hours. Oh. Next three hours, next four hours, next five hours, next six hours. Okay? okay. So yeah. as as you know, as you know, the error will increase once you increase the I mean time steps. Okay. Yeah. So the, yeah. the reason is that this model works well with six steps ahead. Actually, we haven't tested with further steps, which is a good idea. For example, for having another future work, which I'm more than happy, yeah, to have collaboration. Yeah. Cool. Uh, can I just ask one more question? Sure. Yeah. So since you are working with time series data, uh, have yeah. you thought about trying transformers because those those models are more into research work these days regarding yeah. prediction and. Can, I'm sorry. I haven't understood. Sorry, that which which uh, deep learning model you mentioned? Uh, transformers. So you are transformers. Using the... Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, if I want to be honest, I'm actually working on the transformers. As you know, it's a very hot topic currently. Yeah. And actually, actually, definitely, it would. Uh, this is a good idea. And actually, I am. I am learning the basics of transformers. I'm gonna to involve, you know, some optimization elements to the transformers to boost their performance. But actually, I'm working in this idea, and I would be more than happy, for example, to have a collaboration with you if if you are willing to work in this area. As you know, as you know, the performance of the transformer are really great. In comparison with LSTM, I'm not saying in all scenario. In in most scenario, they are right. Uh, I mean, they are the best ones currently. And a good idea, I think, would would be something else. For example, with adding, I mean, the optimization element to the transformer, which would be definitely a very good future direction. Yeah, great. Thank you. And this work and this work was for previous year, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. It was just a comment. Yeah, for... thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. For this great yeah. comment. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mohammed, for your answer and our uh, no audience for such a great question. Yeah. Any more question from the or audiences? Feel free to ask your questions if you have. Amir, you know, the thing is, I, I was trying to mention that yeah. here is the link of, I mean, my yeah. article as well. And Thank this, you. Is a, this is a good blog that everyone who knows who wants to yeah. know more about the automated machine learning and deep learning, this will be a very good source for the beginning. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you. you very much for sharing. If you can just copy and paste in the chat box that our sure. audiences can sure. you know, sure. take advantage, that could be great. Sure. Cheers, thank you. Sure. Uh, just one more time asking our uh, audiences, if you have any question, please feel free to ask before ending the session. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Yeah, no yeah. No worries. I think everybody received. Yeah. Mohammed, I have one yeah. more question, if sure. it is possible. Sure. Uh, so, what is the performance of such a uh, architecture for the uh, you know, 
not very large data sets. So if you have a sort of uh, limitation on your data set, okay. can we go ahead with uh, such a design or in general deep, uh, you know, neural network, uh, you know, architecture or not? Yeah, yeah. The thing is actually, actually we have not this work, another work we have, uh, I mean, Publish in Applied Soft Computing and Computers in Biology and Medicine with the image data. Okay, this something similar, something close to this to this. I mean, neuroevolution strategy, which in one of them we have. I mean, uh, we have how can I say? We have uh, combined it with reinforcement learning from the ensemble. I mean, strategy, and actually we have. Uh, tested for images, actually for the COVID-19 detection, to be more specific. It really works well, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And uh, for low dimensional data, you say that for something its size less than the one that I have to write, right? Yeah. And, and you mean the sort of the data is uh, related to the time series or other types? Sorry, I got yeah, got, yeah. You know. I mean that. I mean that. Do you mean, for example, uh, time series forecasting problem with? I mean, lower data, not the biggest. Yes, 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 yes. 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 The thing Correct. is, yeah. The thing is, as these algorithms are heavy, to be honest, mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe it happens. For example, for the uh, something that we may face, for example, some problems in uh, its, how can we say, in its training, because as you know, deep learning, uh, as you know, there are lots of in uh, feature extraction during this procedure when they wanted to map from, for example, the convolutional to the next layer. The thing is, it may face with some problems with, I mean, I mean, with low amount of data. Oh, the experience says that once the data set is big and bigger, your model cannot overfit. OK, this is the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you very yeah. much for your. No answer. worries. Yeah, yeah. No worries. No worries. All right. Any more question from our uh, speaker? Before ending the session? OK, thanks, everybody. Thanks again, Thank Mohammed, for such a great presentation. We all enjoy a lot. And so, uh, so, yes, before ending the session, I would like to inform you that the IES Western Australia chapter is the host and in spon uh, sponsor of the, uh, you know, International Conference on Industrial Informatics, known as INDIN, will be held in July 2022 in Perth. And hopefully uh, uh, we have one of the, you know, general chair of uh, this conference here with uh, uh, us today. And I would like to invite him to give us a uh, bit um, details of this conference. So uh, we have uh, Associate Professor uh, Farhad Shahnia today with us. Farhad, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, please give us some brief, uh, you know, details about this conference. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thanks very much. Let me also share my screen uh, quickly for uh, giving some uh, very introductory information about the conference. So uh, first of all, I have to thank uh, Dr. Delali for the very good presentation that he did. So very much. interesting. Many times. Thank Many you. Times. Thanks. Uh, and again, I have to also thank uh, 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 Amir, uh, Dr. Yazdani, for the very uh, great leadership that you have demonstrated for the IES Western Australia chapter uh, this year, uh, and uh, with nine technical activities and uh, two social events, that was a very great uh, activity. That activities that uh, the Western Australia chapter did, 
And again, congratulations for the best chapter award that the chapter has received. So next year, the uh, Western Australia chapter is going to be uh, hosting the 20th IEEE IES International Conference on Industrial Informatics in Perth. Uh, at this stage, we are not really sure whether the conference is going to be traditional in person or hybrid or online. We hope for the in person or hybrid event so that we can uh, host as many people as we can, uh, meeting old friends and uh, meeting new people. Uh, so this is the website of the conference for those people who are in, in the areas of uh, industrial electronics and industrial informatics, uh, generally varying from uh, electronics to control to power to signal processing uh, to data science. This is a very large uh, scope of the conference. So I'll just quickly show the uh, technical tracks of the conference. So I'm pretty sure there is an area which suits everyone who is uh, in this meeting today. So from industrial cyber physical systems, uh, artificial intelligence, safety and security industry applications, system and software engineering, robotics and mechatronics in industrial applications, distributed and network control and automation, industrial digitization and digital twins, uh, human computer and machine interaction, real time and network embedded, uh, computing and industrial IoT, faculty, uh, factory uh, automation, uh, technologies, infrastructure application for smart grids, buildings, smart cities, uh, education for engineering and industrial informatics, industrial informatic tools, and even intelligent finance. So these are all wide range of different topics of uh, co to technical topics that are covered under the Indian 2022 conference. Uh, and then uh, for the very last time that was held in Perth was in 2005, that is 17 years ago uh, by next year. So hopefully after 17 years, the conference is coming back to Perth and that would be a very good opportunity uh, for hopefully overseas people to visit Perth, especially after almost two years of lockdown and pandemic. But if we can still, we are going to thinking about the online option. Uh, Luckily, over the last two years, we've got a good experience of how to host online conferences and how to make them more interactive using new ways of socializing online. So uh, anyway, looking forward uh, to meeting as many people as we can. So if you are in these areas and you're intelligent, which definitely if you were interested in the talk, in the talk of today, definitely this conference also uh, is something that uh, I invite you into that. And on behalf of the other general chairs, program chairs, and my colleagues in the Western Australian IDS chapter, I invite you to uh, join this conference. Please distribute the news to your colleagues and peers and, and network, and hopefully we will have a very good and crowded conference uh, in Paris next year in the last week of July. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Farhad, for your uh, introduction on Indeed 2022, and we hope that's we have our audiences to uh, this uh, today in uh, the conference as well. So thanks again, everybody, for attending this webinar. A special thanks to Dr. Jalali again for that such a great fun. presentation. Yeah. We so hope much that. Thank you very much. We hope that next time we invite you again for the you know more. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Cheers. Thank you. So. Uh, uh, that's the end of the session. Before ending the session, I would like to Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in advance to everybody and wish the best for you. Thank you very much for attending this session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.